Welcome back to Controls Hero. Today I want to show you how to program a pump alarm in CCT. And I'll do three different examples. Number one, when you have a start command and your pump doesn't start or you lose status while it's running. Number two, same as number one, but also when your pump is running, but you don't have a start command. That's like putting your pump in hand when your controller is actually not telling it to run. And number three, how to lock out your pump as soon as it goes into alarm. This will actually send a stop command to your pump and will require a manual reset from CCT or from the BMS. And for this tutorial, we'll be using these special modules, a timer set up as an on delay, an XOR, which is an exclusive OR, and a latch module, which will be key to lock out your pump. And I'll briefly explain how they all work. Okay, I'll start by creating a regular activity. So I'm just gonna go for that. Activity, just one. And I'll name it, uh, let's say, pump alarm. Finish. And then I'm gonna right click to it, view logic. Uh, make this big by double clicking. And for this tutorial, I'm gonna assume that you already have your pump start stop output and your pump status input. So I'm gonna create um, my two inputs. I'm gonna create, I'm gonna do everything Boolean. So everything is, is, is logical. And I'll give it a name, PMPSS, pump start stop. And I'll do a pump status. Pump status. Let's do that. And for my output, I want to do also a Boolean. And make it big. And I'll name this. I'm going to right click rename or just press F2. That's what I've been doing F2 to rename. And I'll do a PMP ALM pump alarm. And Let's do a timer. So I'm just going to look or type for timer. Drag it over. And by default, we get a timer uh, set up as a pulse. So I'm going to double click on it, edit. And then I want to set this up as an on delay, which is this is key. And I'm going to make a 15 seconds delay for now. You can do 10 seconds. And then I'm going to apply. And I'm gonna close. And also, uh, we need another input on my timer, so I'm just gonna right click, expose ports for connection, and I want a reset. And I'll explain all this. And then I'm ready to do my connections, so I'm gonna connect my start stop to my input, my status to my reset, and I'm gonna do my output to my pump alarm. So this is the very, very basic setup of this alarm. And for this first example, this is how it works. Anytime we give my pump a start command and we don't get a status within 15 seconds, then we will get an alarm. Also, if we have a start command and a status, but then suddenly we, we lose our status, after 15 seconds, we also get the alarm. Now, let me show you how this timer works. I'm gonna start a simulation at 1x speed. And like I said before, I'm using Boolean inputs and outputs, so you are only going to see false and true instead of start, stop, status, alarm. So, but it's basically the same, it's just false and true. So this is how this timer works. Every time you give a true to its input, it's gonna output also a true after a time delay. That's why it's an on delay. So that delay is the 15 seconds that we set right here. So let's try this. I'm gonna command my pump start, stop to start or true and then I'm gonna send the command and you will see we have a true after 15 seconds we're gonna get a true which in this case the true is gonna be an alarm and you might be wondering why we're gonna get an alarm okay because this is a second there's a second part to this uh, timer so right now let's just get the alarm okay we got a true after 15 seconds and this is the second part every time you put a true to the reset this true is gonna force my output to false. So that means if we get a status from my pump, let's command it to true. And when I command this to true, it's gonna 
force my output to false, meaning that the alarm is going to go away. So true, my alarm goes away. Now let's say that we lose our status. So if we put a false to our reset, what the timer is going to do is going to start counting again before it can output the true to, to the out. So let's just try that. So I'm just going to command this to false, meaning, meaning that we lose our status. Okay, so right now after 15 seconds, if we don't get our status back, uh, we're going to get an alarm. So it's, right now it's counting down. So let's just wait. Okay, true. So we got the alarm. Now let's try it one more time. Let me stop my pump. Let's say that we want to stop it. False. No alarm. False. So now I'm going to give it a start command. And the timer is going to start again. So 50, we have 15 seconds to get a pump status. So if I give a status to my pump, a true, within those 15 seconds, we're not going to get the alarm. Okay. So the alarm is going to remain false. Because, you know, we give it a start command. And, you know, the pump takes a couple seconds to start. So it started. And now there was no alarm activated which is what we want. We always want to give it some time. Okay, so this is the first example. This is the most basic one. But let's say that uh, my controller wants to stop the pump, but the pump is still is still running. So in this case, with this logic, it's not going to work. So this is scenario I was saying that, uh, let, let's say that the controller is, is telling the pump to stop and somebody uh, turns on the pump manually or or there's a problem with the feedback so you're not gonna get an alarm okay so i usually don't need to have an alarm generated when my status is on and no command but if you do i'm going to show you how to do it in the next example okay example number two we want to generate an alarm when we have a start command and no status which this timer can accomplish that but also, we want to generate an alarm when we have no start stop and we have a status. So basically, any time that there is a mismatch between my start stop and my status. So how can we accomplish this? So the key will be using an XOR. So I'm going to go ahead and exit simulation. And I'm going to go and look for my Boolean folder is right here and uh, you know the basic boolean and gates logical gates are and not and or but now we're going to be using an x or and i'll explain why so i'm just going to drag it over and i'm going to do a slight modification i'm going to delete these two lines delete and i'm going to connect my start stop and my status to my x or and then let's move this a little bit and then I'm going to connect my XOR to my timer input. But in this case, we don't need a, a reset. So I'm just going to right click, expose port, port connection, and just uncheck my reset. We don't need that. All right. Now let's zoom out with Control F. Okay. And actually, I want to do an extra step. You don't have to, but I'm going to do it. Right click, and I want to export an additional uh, output so that's my time remaining on my timer so we can see what's going on with the timer and i'm going to double click on it and in order to get it to work i gotta put an interval number here i'm just going to put to update every second and this is going to help us uh, see uh, the timer counting down i'm also going to do an output a float which is a number And let's name it uh, countdown. And I'll connect this. There you go. All right, I want to do a quick parenthesis right now. I want to explain to you what's an XOR, but also compare it to an OR so you know what the difference are. So here I have a true table. And by the way, you can always uh, Google true tables so you can learn a little bit more about them. Okay, so I just want to start with an OR because you might already be familiar with it. So this is how it works. Uh, let's say we have these two inputs, my start stop and my status and my output. So basically, if I have a one on either input or both, we're going to get a one on my output. So either one or both, you'll get 
a one as an output. So if I were to use an OR in my pop example, let's see what will happen. So if my star stop is zero and I have a status, we get a one, so an alarm. Or if my star stop is start and I have no status, I also get an alarm. But if both my star stop and I have a status, I also get an alarm. So this is not gonna work. So so that's why we need to go with an XOR, which basically means exclusive OR. And the way I think of it is exclusive to only one. So the, this is a key difference. Uh, when we have both inputs on or true, we have a zero. So this case is gonna work perfect. So basically when we have a mismatch, like no start but a status, we get an alarm or we have a star command and no status, we also get an alarm. But if both my start is zero and no status, no alarm, and both star stop and status, no alarm. So this is what we want. So it is exclusive to either one or the other, but not both as in the case of my OR. Okay, so coming back to CCT, I already have the simulation going. So I wanna show you the four different scenarios that we have uh, in our true table. So the first one, it's, you know, false and false or zero and zero. So we get a zero or a false, so there's no alarm. So stars, no star stop and no status, no alarm. That's, that's good. So now let's do a zero and a one. So no star stop, but status true. So I'm gonna go to my status, right click command, I'm gonna select uh, I'm gonna select true and then I'm gonna send it. So in this case you're gonna see the output right away changing. So send a true right away. But after 15 seconds you will see that it's gonna go into alarm because we have a mismatch and you see the timer counting. There you go. We got an alarm because there's a mismatch. Next scenario is a true and a false. So let me give it uh, actually a false to my status to put it back. And then I'm gonna give it a start or a true to my pump uh, star stop. And you'll see that a mismatch and you'll see that it's gonna start counting again, counting down. So we have a start command, but no status. So we'll see an alarm generating. There you go, we got the alarm. And finally, if we have both inputs as true, which means uh, star stop and status, we should get a false, so no alarm. So uh, our alarm should go away right away. Let's say that we got a status on my pump. Then I'll send the command and right away, false and no alarm. Now let's exit simulation and let's go to example number three, which is the following. As soon as we get an alarm, we want to stop the pump and lock it out. And this will require a manual reset to unlock it and restart the pump. And the key logic block that we use for this example is the latch. And you can just type latch, which is under timing. I'm just gonna drag it over. And we can start from example number two, or you can go back to example number one, depending on your needs. So I'll use example number one. So I'm just gonna delete my XR. And I'm just gonna expose my reset and make my all connections. Actually, I'm gonna move this guy over right here. Now I want to add my latch in between my timer and my output. So I'm gonna delete this line. I'm just gonna put it in between. And in order to reset my alarm, I want to add a, another input. So I'm just gonna go to, or a Boolean input right here. I'm going to name it alarm reset. And I'll connect it to my reset input. 
and there you have it. Okay, so how does a latch work? So let me go into simulation right away. Okay, so as soon as I get a 1 or a true value in my latch input, it will latch right away. So it's going to output a true. So let's give it a try. I'm going to start my pump and I'm going to leave my status off so we can generate the alarm. So I'm going to go to true. Then my timer is going to start counting down, waiting for the pump status. But I'm not giving the pump status any command. So we'll see the timer going into uh, true or alarm and as soon as we get a true we get the latch uh, true so that means that our pump just lack out but note this if we get a status let's say that my pump uh, started running you know my timer goes right away to false which if we didn't have the latch the the alarm will go away but the latch will remain true or in alarm unless we reset the latch let me show you what i mean so i'm gonna send a true value to my alarm reset so i'm gonna go to true so basically by giving a true to my reset what it does is very similar to my timer reset it's gonna force my output to false so i'm gonna let's give it a true command send so true and it forces my output to false and very important, every time you reset the latch, you always got to put uh, your reset back to false. So I'm going to send a false right away. And that's it. And I'll, I'll show you why in a second. So let's say that uh, we lose our status. So I'm going to send my set my pump status to, to false. Send the command. So we lost the status. So my timer is going to start counting down. And after the 15 seconds, we'll get the alarm. So it's going to latch. And it's going to remain there until we reset the latch, right? So start, stop, no status, alarm, and latch. Now let's reset our alarm. So I'm just going to command my alarm reset to true. And it goes back to false. But I want to show you what happens if you keep the reset set to true without setting it back to false. So let's say that we get our pump status back, so my timer should go back to normal. So right click, I'm gonna send a true command, send. So now we have a pump start stop, a status, and per timer, no alarm. And keep in mind that we still have the true command to my reset. So remember, the true on the reset is forcing the output to false. So now let's fail the pump again. So I'm just gonna send a, a false command. So no status and the timer is gonna after 15 seconds the timer is gonna output my true so it's gonna be an alarm but see what happens the latch is not gonna go into alarm because we have this uh, reset uh, set to true see true and nothing happens so so the key thing is to always put my alarm reset back to false I'm gonna go back to false send the command and now we got my alarm and it's lack out. And I'm gonna do a second part tutorial that allows me to stop my pump as soon as it's lack out. So that way, when you reset your alarm, it's not gonna go into a alarm again right away. So that's for a second part tutorial that I will be doing soon. All right, so this is the end of this pump alarm tutorial, which you can actually apply to any other mechanical equipment. And I show you three different ways to generate an alarm when you have a command and a status. And for my last example, stay tuned for the second part tutorial, as I will show you how to implement it into an actual application. And guys, if you learned something new, please like the video and share it with your coworkers. And if you haven't done so, please subscribe. Thank you very much.